Let's welcome from Google, partner lead, Kieran Campbell, and analytic lead, Andrew Ricker. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us all in the illustrious San Rafael Ballroom this fine morning. As you guys heard, my name is Kieran Campbell, and I'm a partner lead for Google. I've been at Google for about six years, past four years working in the e-commerce and affiliate space. Prior to that, I worked with uh, several Fortune 500 brands and fast-growing startups uh, to implement marketing strategy. And I'm Andrew Ricker. I'm the analytical lead for the group working with uh, Kieran. I've been at Google for four years working with the uh, coupon affiliate space. Uh, before that, I was working for agencies helping large brands uh, figure out their analytics. Andrew and I are incredibly excited to be with you all here today. In our day-to-day -day roles, we partner with some of Google's largest advertisers to understand consumer trends, customer behavior, and develop marketing strategies to match those. It's that journey that actually took us here today. Before we get started, though, I'd like to play a quick video for you all. I'm Broderick, and I am the Coupon Kid. My coupons weigh a total of 64 pounds. I don't really think couponing's weird at all. I think Broderick's a little weird. Getting candy for free is awesome. I get a really big adrenaline rush from saving money. This is my stockpile. Everything in here is worth about $4,500, and I've spent just about $100 on all of it. <laughs> Nothing weird about getting free candy, Broderick. <laughs> so, as many of you noticed or may have recognized, that was a clip from the show Extreme Couponing. And while Broderick may be a little weird or unusual, uh, there's a behavior he demonstrates that's actually not very weird, and that's this excitement to save. Andrew and I have worked in this space for about four years. And during that time, we've seen a variety of articles and think pieces about the death of the affiliate industry. At Google, though, we like to make data-driven decisions and inferences. And the data we've looked at for the past four years tells a very different story. When we look at query volume in the US for the coupons and rebate space, we've actually seen consistent year-on-year -year growth for the past four years. Currently, coupons and rebates queries in the US alone contribute about 200 million monthly searches. And while consumer search interest is increasing, consumer search behavior has changed pretty dramatically in this time as well. When we came on the business, this space was dominated by brand-related searches occurring on desktop. Now, over 60% of the searches occur on mobile devices, and less than 50% of these contain any sort of brand. And it's not just the Brodericks of the world that are searching more frequently for more deals. It's actually that more people are looking to use coupons and codes. eMarketer forecasts that US coupon code penetration will reach about 55% of the pop US population within the next three years. But the way consumers want to save has changed dramatically. In a recent Google consumer survey, we asked US shoppers what is their preferred use of online coupon or cashback sites. As you can see here, the responses were very varied, with 30% preferring in-store mobile coupons, but the people also looking to use websites, apps, extensions, and cashback offers. And while this growth in the industry and uh, increased penetration of coupon and code use is great, it presents challenges for ancillary industries. We live in Silicon Valley, we work at Google, we understand that disruption is very real, and we try to keep a close eye on other industries. One that's been particularly uh, challenged has been the retail industry. In uh, 2017, we completed a study with Deloitte asking uh, American shoppers to identify their favorite brand. Only about 26% of them could, which was down about 60% from just 10 years before. In that same time period, the rise of e-commerce, mobile devices, same-day shipping, 
has been great for consumers, but it's presented challenges for retailers. When we looked at the last 10 years and we took the top 20 retailers, we saw that these external pressures had decreased profit margins, resulting in a loss of $32 billion for just those 20 retailers. All this data started to paint a picture for us, but it was still an incomplete story about the entire and evolving customer journey. And that's why we're so excited to be here today. Great, so as Kieran mentioned, there's you know, this wealth of behavior and changes in behavior that are happening. It was up to us to kind of think about how is this affecting the consumer journey and what is the value of all this uh, coupon and deal-seeking activity to brands? Uh, it's, a, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, Google, we have a ton of data, uh, but at some points it falls flat. We don't see the entire consumer journey uh, across all touch points. So what we did was we partnered with Comscore. Uh, Comscore provides clickstream data that helps us connect this consumer journey. So what do I mean by that? Here's the typical flow that we were interested in really analyzing and breaking down the value of. So uh, you can think about this as discovery all the way to purchase. So discovery really being the search engines when people are looking for coupons and deals. Uh, again, this is kind of Google's wheelhouse. This is the data I live in every day. We have a ton of it. Kieran mentioned some stats. If you're interested in talking more about it afterwards, come find me. Um, but it's, it's really rich data. But the part where it falls, uh, falls flat is that what happens when people get to uh, these coupon sites? Now, I work with very, various partners. We can look at their Google Ads, their Google Analytics to understand the behavior on the website. But it doesn't give us a view of how these coupon affiliates are really adding value across the ecosystem, ecosystem as a whole on an aggregate. And then finally, we need to figure out, OK, on retail sites for brands, what is the value here? What does the purchase look like? What does the visits look like? What is the incremental benefit that brands are getting working with these uh, coupon affiliates? So what we looked at, we had uh, Comscore provides, we commissioned Comscore for a study, and they provide a panel of two, two million US uh, users. Essentially, what you can do with that is you can look back through the second half of 2017, including the shopping holiday period. Um, so a lot of data around this. And you can look at this consumer behavior uh, across these different types of properties. So what I mean by different types of properties, again, it's, the, it's Google, which we particularly looked at, and then uh, coupon sites and retailers' uh, brands. So what was the behavior that we looked at? Well, on Google, it's what you would think. It's query, queries, query volumes. So we, compiled a list of thousands and thousands of queries, uh, branded, so you can think of these as, um, you know, example would be the Google Store, for instance, Google Store coupon, Google Store promo code, uh, and just generics, promo codes, Black Friday deals, uh, what have you like that. So we compiled that list and, and tracked users across those. On the coupon site side, we compiled a, a pretty extensive list of coupon affiliate partners. Uh, so 29 different uh, coupon sites, and we were basically seeing did these users hit a coupon site during this time frame we were looking at? And then lastly, on the retail side, we uh, looked at metrics from uh, the top of the funnel to the bottom of the funnel. Visits, sign-ins, add to carts, purchases, average order value. So what you get when you start looking at this data and all these consumer paths is you can start dividing up these users into different categories. Basically, um, you know, for us, we're interested in seeing, did someone get hit with a paid search ad for a coupon, or did they not? Uh, did someone just use a coupon versus people who were non-coupon users? You can drive a lot of insights out of that by using a, a time series methodology to really align these to see, okay, what is the incremental uplift that we're seeing from uh, these activities? So what we wanna bring to you is the most interesting what we think is the most actionable and statistically significant insights that we got out of this study. Um, the two first ones here, this, these are gonna be related to uh, coupon search ads, specifically to the value of advertising your coupon search ads. And then the last two, we'll hit on the general value of coupon users uh, and what that means to brands. Andrew mentioned that we looked at upper funnel and lower funnel metrics, but at Google, we know better than anyone that Advertising and marketing needs to translate into business impact. The first 
substantial takeaway we had from our observational study with Comscore was that coupon users were more likely to purchase when coming through a shopping ad at a rate of about 2x. So this is a comparison of a user who saw and clicked on a search ad, proceeded to the publisher site, and then to the retailer site. They were 2x more likely to convert in those cases. So about those purchasers, um, we want to see, OK, are, is this driving incremental value? Is this something that's benefit or would have happened either way? Um, so there's a lot of ways to think about incrementality. And um, I'm sure everyone has their favorite methodology in this room. Uh, you know, there's, there's A-B testing. There's um, causal impact regression testing. There's uh, just looking at cookies and IDs to, to try to figure out was this user here uh, before. What we have essentially is observational data. So we can see, OK, within this click stream, was this user at the retail site before going to search for a coupon? So what we actually see in that instance is that 94% of the time of the transactions driven by coupon affiliate paid search ads, those were incremental. So what that means is they were not on the retailer website before they went and searched for that coupon. Um, in other words, you know, this kind of uh, the, the behavior that's feared in the industry, um, where someone is at the, the uh, checkout stage, they're at the cart. Um, you can see you have a promo code. Well, I got to go find a promo code. And then they go and search within Google for that promo code. That really only happens about 6% of the time. So we're basically seeing people are starting their journey with looking for deals and then uh, proceeding to go buy. Then the, the next part that we wanted to look at was around um, coupon users. So that was around search ads, which Google uh, brands who are advertising, super interested. But just in terms of the overall value of having coupon users and having your coupons out there, what is the value to a brand of having people use those? Um, so the first thing that we noticed is that there is more brand loyalty. So we can define brand loyalty a few different ways. One of the things that we like to do is just look at how often do people search for that brand? So we saw that when someone used a coupon to make a purchase, they were actually twice as likely to go search for that brand afterwards. So basically, you can think, hey, someone made uh, or found value with this brand. They appreciated it, and they're sticking with that brand, searching for more of that brand, and likely leading to increased purchases, which Kieran will talk about. Barry in the lead for me. Uh, and while brand loyalty helps address one of those challenges that we talked about earlier, um, facing retailers and really the larger industry, we saw that coupon users not only search more often, but they keep coming back to the same retailer to make multiple purchases. In the six-month time frame of the study, when we looked at coupon users versus non-coupon users, and again, this is not through paid channels necessarily, we saw that they were 26% more likely to make a second purchase, 27% more likely to make a third purchase, and 33% more likely to make a fourth purchase in that same six-month time frame. And ultimately, what does that translate to? Bus business impact and more money. And what we saw in our observation was that coupon users generated 5% more revenue in that six-month time frame than non-coupon users. So. What did we learn besides Broderick's a little weird? Ultimately, we saw, and we are Google, so this makes sense, but that paid search ads play an important role in engaging shoppers and encouraging them to take an action, meaning they have a higher propensity to convert. Additionally, and this was surprising to us, and I saw some surprise faces in the room as well, Sales driven by coupon customers were more incremental than we had previously thought. And in a comparison shopping area with pressure on margins and EBITDA, coupon and affiliate partners help solve problems in terms of brand loyalty and increased value. And over time, these users uh, thank you for that and they become loyal to the brand, continuing to engage, make purchases, and search for you. So 
with that, we, we left plenty of time for questions. We, we like to make data-driven inferences. Uh, <laughs> sounds a little more uh, qualitative. But I'd say they're a critical component of a consumer shopping journey and an expectation that more than half of the population is going to have. Did you see any uh, sections of coupons like, um, sorry, like travel versus um, re uh, retail perform better than other sections with coupons? It's a great question. Yeah, so the, the reason why we shared these in aggregate is because these were the most statistically significant, uh, the ones that we felt most confident. And when you start dividing it up into categories, you start getting into, okay, you're willing to accept 80% confidence or something like that. Um, we, there was uh, fluctuations and we had a, a number of different retailers from travel, from you know, furniture, apparel, um, all these different retailers. Um, and there were fluctuations. Um, I think travel was pretty strong. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I'm, I apologize for that. But uh, travel was definitely one of the stronger ones, if I remember correctly. Hi. Um, did you guys see any performance differences uh, when you had expiry dates on coupons versus not having them? Yeah, we didn't look at the efficacy of messaging, to my understanding. But yeah, this, this was really to, you know, what we wanted to answer was, what role do coupon affiliates play in the overall ecosystem? Um, as far as the level of detail, as far as like what deals, what percentage off, or you know what threshold or expiration dates, we didn't get into the minutia of you know what sort of deals really resonate. And I'll also add that this is meant to be an additional data point. All of you are data-driven decision makers in this room, and you have rich and unique data sets in your own right. And so um, we just hope to fill in some of the gaps. Clearly, this is not comprehensive, and gaps still remain. But we're just hoping that this can supplement your data as well. So for the folks in the back of the room that couldn't hear, the question was, is this study public or can we get a part of it? Yeah, we'll be working with CJU to distribute the study. Um, and then the goal is, yeah, to share this more broadly with everyone so that you guys can utilize it. Yeah. Hi. Um, oh, I was wondering, as the penetration increases, um, does Google have any plans to be a coupon aggregator or affiliate in that sense? <laughs> 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 throwing, it to, throwing it to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> decisions way above my pay grade, is what I would say. Uh, I'd say there's no current plans. Yeah. <laughs> but the you, SEO obviously hurts, or the SEO changes hurts coupon affiliates quite a lot. As you said, like, to be ranked highly on the first page of Google makes a big difference. So is there, I guess, I don't know if it's a bit of a loaded question, but the SEO changes obviously hurt those guys more. Is there more plans to, to do that? Like, uh, I guess, to clean up that space a little bit more? So it's a great question. Um, what I would say is that Google, Google's fundamental approach to search is to make it as useful as possible to consumers, and then kind of everything else follows. And so uh, Google will analyze what consumer search behavior and browsing behavior looks like on Google.com, and then make changes to make it more useful. What those actual changes are, it's hard to say. Um, obviously, there's algorithm updates that roll out all the time. They can impact different industries differently. But that's kind of the crux of what all those decisions are. I was wondering if you had a study for any other countries. This is very US-centric. I just wondered whether you've done this in other territories at all. We, we have not. So yeah, um, this was just for the US. Uh, this is kind of our dipping our toes into this sort of research. We've been thinking about doing this for a while. Um, we knew we wanted to um, do it for the US first. Uh, but you know, if it's successful and it's useful, we might look at doing this in other countries as well. I also have a question coming through on the app. How can you apply this data to subscription businesses in terms of repeat purchases? 
subscription businesses with monthly recurring revenue already? Or? Well, I mean, we did look at um, some of the stats uh, you, you saw in my methodology slide. There was, we looked at it throughout the purchase funnel. So um, not only just purchases and average order value to retailers, but website visits, add to cart and sign ups. So um, that data did exist within our data set. Um, I can't remember exactly how it looked, but. Um, yeah, a lot, so, and some of it wasn't statistically significant it, yeah, as well, so I don't, yeah, we wouldn't didn't want to like spouse on that. Yeah, I think we didn't pull it out for a reason. Maybe even specifically card card linked offers. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, we kind of looked at it all in aggregate. Um, as Andrew mentioned, there were about twenty nine different couponing publisher sites that we analyzed, and so um, in that mix was a variety of different. Um, I don't know if we have any way to break it out necessarily. No, um, <laughs> no, we don't. Uh, but yeah, it, it was. Again, kind of just looking at the entire ecosystem, benefit of having these affiliates. So I, I think you're right, and I think to the point that we were talking about with kind of the frictionless user experience, that makes it easier for people to save. Um, so I think those are a benefit to the consumer. I, I will also add that we've run Google consumer surveys like that for the past couple of years we've worked in this industry, and the rise of people preferring card link offers has been um, increasing year over year, where Essentially, when we came on the business four years ago, we never saw that show up in survey results. Or if we did, it was um, marginal at best. And now, I think, without the stat on, on hand going back, I think it was like 12 to 15% of people said they prefer that. And we expect that to continue to grow. Yeah. When you guys were talking about the second, third, and fourth purchase, uh, were they also primarily coupon driven? I don't know if we looked at, did we look at the click stream before it? We didn't look at the, it was basically the, the data itself is, is this a coupon user? And that's defined by did they use a coupon to purchase initially? So basically that first purchase. So we didn't look at if it was, again, a coupon that led to that second, third, fourth purchase. Um, that's something we could probably look into, though. Um, if they're continuing to look for deals because they know it exists out there, it would be interesting to see. And I had a second question around brand. Uh, can you define what you mean by brand? Is it people looking for branded coupons in terms of products or branded coupons in terms of retailers? It's, yeah, retailers. So it would be a store. Um, so I'm curious, with the paid search aspect of it, for a lot of the like brand plus coupon terms, in addition to a coupon site build, bidding on that, there will also be the retailer site bidding on that, or at least broad matching to those terms. Did you look at, in terms of clicking through, how that affects the coupon site or the brand site, having both the retailer and coupon sites appear on those terms? We looked at, um, the, the difference here was basically, was there an exposure to uh, a coupon, like a coupon site paid search ad versus not? So um, in that, there's a lot grouped into it, right? So. Most of the times, there's a brand bidding on that as well. So what we're trying to get to is those two groups, you know, presu presumably, they had to do, um, you know, they clicked on something once they searched. And if it wasn't a coupon ad, they probably went to a retail site or went to an organic search or something of that nature. Um, so what we try to do was then suss out, okay, the presence and the exposure and the click to that coupon ad versus someone who didn't. So. To, to answer your question, it's kind of baked into the calculations rather than explicitly really called out. And then I would say in the past when we've looked at other uh, data query sets and we've looked at um, multiple people entering the auction and we've looked at total paid clicks, we see that those actually increase um, as more advertisers enter the auction. Again, this is just the paid perspective, so that's not saying anything about the organic side. Um, but we've seen when more advertisers are in the auction, uh, paid clicks are actually additive. Great. We have time for one last question. Thanks, guys. Uh, just a quick question regarding the first slide around the over the last four years that it's sort of been going on the up and up. 
Was that specifically just on paid or organic? Because I'm sort of looking at Google search trends right now mm -hmm. uh, over the last five years in the US, and it's actually been going down. Yeah, um, so it's regardless of paid and organic, uh, this was basically raw query volume. Uh, and raw query volume for the coupons and rebates space. So this is uh, kind of our categorization that encompasses everything within coupons and rebates. Um, there's a subtle difference between Google Trends and the raw query volume data, which uh, we can get into. But it's basically Google Trends is a measure of popularity of that subject versus uh, everything else on Google, whereas this was the raw query volume. Um, so there's a very subtle difference kind of on our back end as what that calculation is. Uh, so they might not match up all the time, depending on what you're looking at. Thank you so much, Andrew and Kieran.